I did a few repairs to my face before coming out to do this because <clears throat> I see stuff um, when I play it back <laughs> and I think, oh. Um, so I was just doing a few repairs and noticed that the red from my mask, my CPAP mask, is still there anyway, so I don't care. Whatever. Whatever. We've had another wood delivery this morning. Turns up out of the blue. I mean, I know that I sort of say, can we have some more wood in mid-August? And But it, it the lorry just turns up and we're not prepared. You know, we've got furniture to move, stuff in the garden to move. And um, he has to come in through up through the right of way, which means Mark has to take fence panels down and a post down and Mark's not dressed and got quite grumpy. But anyway, it's been delivered. So we've got plenty, plenty of wood for this winter and hopefully some left over. I think the last couple of winters, I think they, I don't know whether they've been colder or longer, um, but we've started to run out of wood by January or get quite low and it causes quite a lot of anxiety about will there be enough. Um, so this year we've we've ordered more and we have more because it is our only form of heating and um, it should be plenty but we do like to end up with some left over it, it feels better to be have surplus wood for the following year rather than to use all of your wood up and then be left with none um, and, and I know that we're really lucky to have enough money to afford to pay um, for more wood so um Mark was listening to LBC yesterday. He's listening he listens to James O'Brien in the mornings and he'd recorded it on um he'd recorded it on the telly, on the free box, because I'd interrupted him for something. I can't remember what it was for a job to oh to do some a job. Um so he recorded it. So we were both listening to it because it was playing back through the free box in the room that I'm in. Um and he was talking about there were I, I I was picking up some of it, but one of the things that that struck me was that there are people, and obviously this is in the UK where the um, energy prices, electricity prices, and all of those bills are going to be hitting doormats soon and and um, later in the year. There's a lot of people that don't know what's coming, which which is shocking. I think James O'Brien was shocked that. A lot of people are completely unaware of this whole your electricity is going to go up by however many percent. And um, the person calling in pointed out or talked about, which is something I talked about to my sister the other day or, or under a, something she posted on Facebook, was that some people are so busy trying to keep their heads above water so busy working however many jobs they have to work to you know keep the family alive to to keep food on the table they don't have time to look at the news they don't see they're, they're distracting themselves perhaps with the stuff that's supplied to distract yourself with so you don't see what's coming um and i was it was really shocking to think that there are going to be some people who receive an electricity bill or a gas bill or, or whatever it is that are not expecting the price hike. It's terrifying. Um, he also talked on there, was talking to barristers because barristers are going on strike. I've just, looked, I've just seen a post that says that they've balloted and they've agreed to go on strike. Um, and there was a discussion around, um, you know, why do they need to, money, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think, like everybody, in, in real terms, they haven't had any pay rises. And, you know, they're um, something to do with hours. They often work long hours. I can't remember what it was now, but the knock on effect of the barristers going on strike is that people sitting in prison waiting for their um, their case to be heard, waiting for that to go ahead, waiting for all of that um, will carry on sitting in prison. Um, and you can imagine the unrest that's going to cause. Um, it's a bit of a melting pot, isn't it? So people who are expecting for, you know, a trial date 
um, you know, next month and they're having to wait another three months. This gets, it's, it's just a, it's a, not a melting pot. Gunpowder peg, keg? No, it's probably not that either. But it, it's, you know, it's another place where difficulties are going to arise. And I imagine prison officers, like nurses, like doctors, like the, 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 the rail strike, the um, train drivers and, uh, and the, ner the nurses, I've said that, teachers, all of those have not had decent pay rises, prison officers as well. So, and I'm sure that prison officers are pared down to the bare minimum. Um, it's just a, it's just a powder keg, isn't it? It's, it, something's gonna shift massively. Um, and And all I can do is sit here and watch in horror and know and be thankful that I'm not in it um, and worry about my family that are in it. You know, I have family over there. My sister lives over there. My auntie lives over there. My son's there with his family. Um, my, you know, my grandchildren are there. Um, it's, it's quite worrying. Um, but something has to shift. Something has got to change. Um, I think the to the government, the Tories, I say the Tories because they've been in power for so long. They've been in power for so long and yet I still see them trying to blame something that's gone wrong on the Labour Party, <laughs> on the previous government. You know, But it's like, you've been the previous government for years. Um, they, I think they've had a 20% pay rise over a period of time and all of these workers that are beginning to think about going on strike and already are on strike, um, haven't had that. They've had, I don't know, two or three percent. And of course, in real terms, that's not what they've got because of inflation. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a really difficult winter for for, for people here too. Um, you know, we're, we're all here. The, the cost of living crisis isn't just UK based, but I think UK is compounded by um, compounded by Brexit and compounded by all the privatisation. So all of the money that people are putting into um, what should be um, public services is just going to the CEOs and not into infrastructure, not into, you know, so all the money you're paying for your water bill isn't going to um, repair leaks or um, make sure that you don't have shit pumped into the sea. Um, it's going to the, you know, the fat cats. Whereas here, um, there's much more of an equality and, you know, uh, we have good public services. We have good, um, well, they're just the money. That I'm sure that there are, you know, France isn't perfect, but we have caps on our, um, the, the energy bill's capped and it you know we're I've noticed that the I don't know what your fuel price fuel prices are like over there now but our fuel price has come down our we bought um diesel and I, last time I looked diesel was down to one one point one one point eighty something per litre and it had gone up to well over it had gone up to two two ten I think when we in July so we're not immune from it over here, but I think that we are in a much better position. Mark and I are pretty immune anyway because we're quite comfortable, so I don't have to look at prices in the way some people do. And I realise that that's that's quite a privilege. That's a luxury, and I'm you know I appreciate it. And um, but I think um, I, f I feel really 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 worried for people this winter. For people that are on very very you know very very low income working as hard as they can i watched a clip from 2019 it was ken loach it's an amazing bloke ken loach the film director he did a great film called i daniel blake showing um, the life of a guy who was um i think he was we watched it ages ago, several years ago now. Um, I think he was off on disability benefits. He'd got a heart problem. And so it shows him going through all of the, the benefit system, all of the, the problems that you have um, 
it was very, very telling and very, very real. And that's what's happening now. And this was 2000. So Ken Loach was on Question Time in 2019. And he very, very clearly talked about this is what, what it's about. This is what the gig economy, economy is about. You know, people driving around in white vans on zero hour co contracts being fined if they don't go to work, fined if they don't find a driver to replace them and um, and also have to pay for the hire of the van that they didn't use because they were sick or they went needed to go for a consultant appointment uh, because they weren't well. He talked about a guy that, he was using a guy as an example who had um, a heart problem or was sick anyway, went to see, went for his appointment with the consultant, missed work, got fined, all of that, and, and then realised that he couldn't do any of your follow-up appointments because he couldn't afford to do any of the follow-up follow appointments and ultimately, several months later, died and he was 50-something. And that's that's what what people are having to do. So it's little wonder someone like that doing that, trying to live their life, trying to make a living, isn't noticing what's going on in the news and that they're going to end up with electricity bills that are going to just knock them for six. So I recommend you have a look at Ken Loach. I have a recommend you watch I, Daniel Blake. It's um, it's very real. We watched it um, over here um, at the cinema. And back then, Joe's then boyfriend, who's French, um, sort of said to us, is that is that is that true? And we said, yeah, that's that's how it is, because this particular boyfriend was um, on unemployment benefit over here. An unemployment benefit, and it may have changed now, is um, lasts up to two years, and it's eighty percent of your um, the last salary that you were earning. So a very comfortable place to be, and not the amount of pressure that you get in the UK to go and find jobs. I don't think it may have changed a bit. I think towards the end of his chômage, it had changed. But I'm talking several years ago now, so it might be different. But I can remember. I can remember when Joe was in a push chair and I think I was probably pregnant with Phil and um, I was signing on I was signing on and was I pregnant with Phil? I couldn't have been on maternity leave at that point maybe it was Phil that was in the push chair but I was signing on and, and I wasn't really you know I wasn't really put under pressure to be doing anything about finding work and I knew that I could sign on because I'd paid national insurance and I did and got you know I got money um can't imagine what it's like over there now you know jumping through hoops to prove that you're not dead yet a friend of mine went for one of those assessments years ago went for one of those assessments with a doctor to you know to start to to carry on with her disability benefit really sick woman um and he just dismissed her completely dismissed her and she stormed out because <laughs> nobody dismisses michelle she stormed out of there and she went right i'll go and find some fucking work and um she came and worked for me um at the nursing uh, the nursing home i was managing in the kitchen she did some short hours in the kitchen and i'd be talking to her some days and i could see she was like cyanized you know blue around her lips where she wasn't getting enough oxygen and she wasn't well and i'd be you know trying to persuade her to be less active or do less or whatever um two or three months later she was dead but she'd been dismissed by the doctor who was doing her disability um allowance assessment so that's what it's like and that's what people are facing and dog help them this winter.